He knew they were going to defy, they were going to defy him, they were going to run away, they were going to say they didn't even know who he was. And yet he said, I love you so much. I want you. So we take and drink in remembrance of him. God's blessing. Come into his presence this morning. That's what he's wanting out of us. That's what he would like us to do. Just come into his presence and just listen to him. We want to pray together as a family. And I know there's a lot of prayer requests that are there. And we're not your answer. We're not your answer. God is your answer. We want to love one another deeply. We want to care about each other. And so I encourage you this week that you look for people that you could pray for. That you just take time to care about one another. That's what God's Word keeps saying to us is that we would care about one another. So let's pray together we could. Father, there is pain. There is so much struggle going on in our world today. And Father, I just declare that it doesn't matter what's going on out there. You are still God Almighty. You are still our Savior. You are still our hope. That's what we take a deep breath in right now. Our trust in you, our faith in you. Father, the, the struggles, the trials that we're going through, help us turn to you for the answer. Help us look to you to be our answer. We love you. We are so, so thankful for you, the price that you have paid for us because you love us. May we love you correctly. May we love one another correctly. May we care about each other. In the precious, holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
for me. In Christ alone, my hope is found. That's where my hope is, is in Christ. That's what I want us to be about. I, uh, I got just a couple of announcements before we, we do our sermon this morning. Um, uh, can I just do this personally? I'm a, you lift up the sheets, that's so kind of you. But this is a special birthday for me also. Because uh, my mother is listening to our sermon this morning. If you only knew... Yeah, hi mom, how you doing? I love you. And stuff, so, so it is a special day for me. It is a special, my, my birthday is a special day. But it's not about me this morning. Thank you for celebrating it. But now, it's about us coming into the presence of Jesus. Coming into God's presence and just focusing totally upon Him. That's what I want us to think about, what I want us to do. Uh, just so that you know, we will have another sermon, uh, service next Sunday, the 31st. There will be a service. And, uh, but those of you who are worshiping at home, you're not running away from God. You're not. You're, do, you're doing just fine. Continue to do that. But just take this time to be in His presence. Our time with Him is not just about Sunday morning during church. Our time with Him is about every day of the week, our whole day, what we're doing. And so, uh, God's blessing on you as you come, as you take time to be in His Word this morning. Uh, with us if we could. Uh, Ron, could I ask you to pray for me, please, brother? Father, we do thank you that we can worship you wherever we're at. We pray that your Holy Spirit will work in our lives. Fill us now with you, Lord, that we might get what you want us to out of Pastor Rod's message today. Bless him as he gives it to us, Lord, and use his spirit to work on us. Help us to put everything into practice from your word, Lord. In your name we pray and give you praise. Amen. Put in practice. Help us put in practice what your word says. That's what I want this morning to be about, folks, is about his word, what he wants to say to us. We... Uh, we are all going to love each other in different ways. That's the first verse four, or chapter four of First Peter, verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. His great variety. Use them. Use those gifts well to serve one another. That's what we're supposed to be about, is loving others, caring about others. The NIV says, use whatever gift you have received to serve others. We're going to love others in different ways, because we are wired different. God has made all of us different. Verse 10 told us that we will love each other in different ways. Verse 11 clears up a couple of those ways. Look at 1 Peter 4, 11. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. When we talk to someone, let God's word be the foundation for what we say, for what we think, for what we speak. Now, the next thing, the first one is speaking, the next one is serving. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. Let God be your foundation coming out of your house, your heart. Let God living in you be your foundation. Let that be what drives you. So that in all things, here it is, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. If I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be and love others the way I should, it's not going to turn around and be about me. That's not who gets the praise. That's not who gets the... It is God. 
Because if I love you the way that I should, that is God coming through me. It's not me. It's not about me. It's about having God come through us. And that's what we need to be about, is having God. Ooh, I'm sorry. We're just reviewing this, I know. Okay. I have seen so many of our church family, of our people, I've seen you so many times. I've seen, there's a number of you who fix things for people. Who just fix. I, I, I can look right now at somebody that was, that was fixing a house for somebody up on Palmer. We're going to see some pictures of that next week. But people who just chose to love God, to love others by doing something for them. Some of you have made meals for somebody, given food to somebody. I've experienced that, brothers and sisters, some good food that has been given to me and Kathy. And that is your way of loving. I have watched some of you who just sit and talk with somebody. Just look at them and listen to them and care about them, loving them. That's three different ways that we do. Now, if we're going to do those ways in the correct way, which verse 8 told us that the correct way was, quote, love one another deeply. We are supposed to be motivated by our love of God. So when we speak to someone, when we serve someone, it is based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it's supposed to be about, Rod is your relationship with Jesus. And that should be happening daily. What is our motive that we have to love others deeply? What is your motive? Have you ever thought about that? Our motive is written in the last part of verse 11. The NLT says, quote, Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. It's not about making me special. It's about making God the Father, God the Son. It's about making God the Holy Spirit special. That must be the motive for me loving others. The motive that I would be kind to you needs to come out of my love for Jesus, not trying to build myself up. Not trying to make myself special. First Peter is laying this all out for us. <laughs> oh man, part of me doesn't even want to do this sermon. You just got to understand this, folks. I told you about verses 1 through 11 in First Peter chapter 4. The New American Standard Bible says, quote, Keep fervent in your love. And we talked about that, and that's a good verse. Keep fervent in your love. Love God deeply. Love others deeply. Treat other people kindly every single day. That's what we talked about. That's what verse 1 through 4, uh, 11 was. Keep fervent in your love, Rod. But folks, that was the good news of these verses. Now I've got the bad news for you. The bad news is the subtitle of verses 12 through 19. The good news was the subtitle of verse 1 through 11. Now the bad news of the subtitle of verse 12 through 19. The subtitle of that is, quote, Share the sufferings of Christ. Oh. That's... <laughs> We're there. I would, I would rather not do it, but I don't have a choice. I've got to do verse by verse. So we're going to go through 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 19. I want to write the big picture for you first. I want, I want you to see the whole big picture. I need the Word in my life in order to change me. I need the Word to work in my heart so what comes out of me is different. Does that make sense? 
if God's word comes into my heart, then what comes out of me will be correct. If Rod's selfishness is what comes out, it's not going to be correct. I'm not going to be loving you correct. Okay, so I want to read 1 Peter 4, 12 through 19, and I want you to see the whole picture. Um, we're going to spend some time then, verse by verse, but I first want to just give you a whole picture of this is. So let this get into your heart. Not just your brain. Let this get into your heart. Now, there's times that it gets to into our brain and then it flows down into our heart and changes. If the only place we've got wisdom is our brain, then what's coming out of us isn't always correct. So let God's word come into your heart and change your heart. This is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. This is out of the message. Eugene Peterson wrote the message, I know. And, and I don't use this every week or anything like that. But this is, this is good. This is the whole big picture. So watch this. Starting at verse 12. Friends, when life gets really difficult, that means when the trials and the struggles and the pain is in your everyday life, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Look at verse 13. Instead, Rod, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Jesus Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. Now, I'm sorry, folks, but this is really clear to me right now. I'm not liking what I'm going through. I don't like where I'm at right now. But listen to what this is saying to Rod. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. Look at 14. If you're abused, if you suffer, Rod, if you have trials because of Jesus Christ, count yourself fortunate, Rod. If you've got some struggles, count yourself fortunate. It is the Spirit of God and His glory in you that brought you to the notice of others. If I will act the correct way going through this trial, if I will act the correct way, that will bring God into the picture rather than Rod into the picture. Rod's not the issue. God is the issue. What God is doing for me is the issue. Look at verse 15. <laughs> this one's interesting. It kind of slides in here. If they're on you because you broke the law. So people will go, get after us if we are walking with Jesus Christ. If we're just bringing glory to God. If we're doing life the way we should do. People will not like us at times because of that. They'll come after us. That's what we, he was talking to people that were going through that and stuff. But listen to this. If they're on you because you broke the law and disturbed the peace, that's a different matter. So if you're acting selfish, if you're acting rude, if you're acting like you shouldn't act because you want to act that way, that's a different matter. Don't put yourself in that position and feel righteous because people don't like you. We'll, we'll come to it. Look at verse 16, sorry. But if it's because you're a Christian, don't give it a second thought, Rod. Be proud of the distinguished status reflected in that name. What am I supposed to be proud of? The name of Jesus Christ. The, the name, if you call me a believer in Jesus Christ, if you call me a Christian, be proud of that, Rod. That's what it's supposed to be about. Look at verse 17. It's judgment time for God's own family. We're first in line. If it starts with us, think what it's going to be like for those who refuse God's message. If God, if good people barely make it, what's in store for the bad people? So, if you find life difficult, 
Because you're doing what God said. Listen to this really careful. If you find life difficult because you're doing what God said, take it in stride, Rod. Trust him. He knows what he's doing and he'll keep on doing it. God will do what's best. Wow. This section of scripture has really started meaning something to me. It's really opened up to me. That is the word spoken powerfully to us. These verses are a battle in our life. That's what they're talking about. Now the battle will come into our life numerous times. Or for some people, the battle is every day of your life. This is all, you, this is all you've ever known. This is all you've had to battle against. Relax, Rod. Whew. Deal with the struggles. Deal with the trials. Deal with the pain. And fight against the sin in this battle that you're in right now, Rod. Let me give you just a thought. What I'm battling right now, what I'm fighting against right now, it causes me struggles. And what, this, what I'm trying to say is, deal with those in that battle, Rod. But sin is also something that I'm battling. Because selfishness comes out of me. And why me? What did me, me? I get to whining. And that's the battle with sin. That's what I've got to fight hard, is that battle with sin. Don't let sin get control of you. Now, 1 Peter, all of it is written to the persecuted Christians that were throughout the Roman province of Asia. Okay, That's who Peter was writing to. And they were going through this battle, this struggle, this trauma, because they were Christians. There's three foundational teachings for these people and for us that, came, that come out of his teaching that he's going to give us. Here they are. Number one, believers are to remain strong in Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Believers, if you call yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, then remain strong in Jesus Christ. Second one, believers are to live and act well during hard times. I'm sorry, but we're in a hard time as a nation right now. I don't like where we're at. And, it, and it's, it's big. It's not one thing. It's not two things. It's a whole bunch of things. Live and act well, Rod, during these hard times. That means love one another. Care about one another. The third thing is, there is hope for all who suffer because of our faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what we're suffering. Jesus Christ is still God Almighty. Jesus Christ is still the one who's paid the price for each of us. <sighs> Take a deep breath, Rod, and just relax. That's what this needs to be about. So, look with me. Grab a hold of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 2. We're going to go through them verse by verse. Beloved, and in other translations, it says, Dear Friends. This is a title that's meant for everyone who loves Jesus Christ as Savior. You are beloved. You are a dear friend. Do not be surprised, Rod, at the fiery ordeal. Do not be surprised at the fiery trial. Do not be surprised at the painful trial that has taken place among you to test you. What I'm going through, I don't know this for sure. Please, please don't take this as an absolute. But I don't know if what I'm going through right now is to test me, am I really loving Jesus? Or am I mad at God because I'm in a bad spot and you're not taking care of it? Does that make sense? So am I loving Jesus the way that I should? Do not... Be surprised that this fire ordeal is taking place among you to test you, Rod, 
as though something strange were happening to you. That will come to that. That'll come. But it's not strange. What's coming into my life is not strange. Beloved, quote, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal. Do not be surprised when you go through a trial, through a struggle, through a pain. Don't be surprised about it. Look at verse 12 again in the NIV 84. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering. That's really clear, isn't it? As though something strange were happening to you. Don't think that because you're a Christian that everything should be perfect for you. I'm not going a good direction for you, folks. And you might say, we're not coming there again. I, I'm okay with that. I, I don't blame you in some ways. But just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that everything's going right for you. If we're a Christian, when things are going wrong, everything's okay. Because God is still God. Jesus is still Jesus. Everything is okay for me. So smile, Rod. Just relax. There is a purpose tied to these fiery ordeals, these painful trials that we get into. The only way to handle them is to trust our holy God. You got a trial in your life? Trust God. Trust Jesus Christ. Take a look at Jesus Christ. Spend every day of his life with people against him, and he did nothing but love people deeply, even when they we're against him. Now, what God is desiring of us is that this be a daily decision that we need to make to love one another. We must be choosing righteousness on a daily, bus daily basis, on a daily decision. It needs to be that we choose righteousness. It is a heart issue. It's not what's going on around us. It's an inside issue that then comes out on the outside. If I will deal with my inside correctly, Rod, then what comes out will be more correct. Isn't that right? That that's what it would be? You can't just pretend like you're making right decisions. We, any of us, have numerous Famous people that pretend they are righteous. Look at David in the Old Testament. In his righteousness, his relationship with Bathsheba. He was declaring his righteousness, but was going completely wrong, completely foul. He lied about who he was. All you got to do is look at numerous famous people who have submitted and who have fallen and have been trapped by their sin. They declare their righteousness, but they are not there. We just had a guy uh, who was very popular. He was a teacher, a good teacher. He really was a good teacher. And he died just lately, and they found out that he had been choosing sin in his life during that whole time, but never, never came up, never dealt with it, never took care of it. It was proven that he was unrighteous in his world, in his life, and yet claiming that he was righteous all the time. We fight against sin in our heart and we need to let God come in and take care of our heart. Because if we'll let him take care of our heart correct, then what will come out of me will be more correct. Does that make sense? I've got to let him work inside me. Now, it's not just our choice of sin that brings us grief. It is also the fiery ordeals. It is the painful trials. It is the suffering that comes into our life. 
Look at 1 Peter 4, 12 again in the New American Standard. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you, here it is, for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. Quote, which comes upon you for your testing. The fiery ordeals, the painful trials, they will come upon us to test where our heart is at. Now, I don't know where they all come from. But if God gave me my brain tumor and my brain cancer, I still say thank you. And I have no problems with that because of what it's done for me. Because of how it has changed my heart. Does that make sense? Ah. Those trials, those struggles, will test us to see if we're trusting the Father. <laughs> Hello, little buddy. How are you doing today? Smile. You're, you're the only smile I see in the whole place, but that's okay. That's all right. That, it's a good day, isn't it? But, you know, coming into God's presence, what did Jesus say about the children when the old people said, get that kid out of here? What did Jesus say about that? He put them in his lap and said, love these kids. Love these kids deeply. Does that make sure? That's why I've got no problems with him being here. Don't let that take you away from listening to God. This little boy is going to end up coming, hearing, being told that he's loved, etc. Time and again. Let that come for him. I never got that from the church when I was a kid growing up. I never had the church love me. They didn't care about me at that time. I don't want to be that kind of a church, folks. I want us to love those children deeply, to care deeply about them. And that means love them at school. I am so sorry. My, my brain is just not in the same check that it used to be. What is your first name, please? Haley. Haley. I'm so sorry. I could not think of it. I, I have a granddaughter that I couldn't think of her name and stuff. But I want Haley to feel loved when she comes here. I want her to feel that everybody here loves her, cares about her deeply. I want the little boy. I want our kids to feel love. Bella. Bella, I'm sorry, but you, you just got to take me for where I'm at. I don't have a choice. Those struggles, what I'm going through right now with names, with words, that's a normal part of my life when I'm in these struggles. Now remember what James chapter 1 verse 2 told us about how to act when I'm in a trial. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. The Revised Standard says, Count it all joy, my brethren, when you meet various trials. Count it all joy, Rod, when you're meeting a trial, when you can't remember those names, when you can't remember that word. Count it all joy when you're meeting those trials and just keep trusting it can't get any more plain than that for us. It can't get any more blunt than that for each one of us where we're at in our life. Now, go back to verse 12. All the Bible translations say this almost exactly the same way. Ends it with this, quote, As though something strange were happening to you. That is what the fiery and the painful trials are all about. They are strange, they are odd, but they become a natural part of our life. The struggles and the trials do. Get used to that, folks, and don't get mad at God. Don't get mad at your friends. Don't get mad at your family. 
when those struggles come into you, when your kids or your parents do something wrong, do something stupid, don't get mad at them. Keep loving them. Keep loving them the way they should be loved. That's what Jesus Christ is doing for each one of us on a regular basis. Rest in Jesus. Rest in the Holy Spirit. Rest in our loving Heavenly Father. And remember this. Eternity is coming. Life is our short time. Does that make sense? Seven, 67 years, just so that you know. 67 years today. That's a short time when I compare it to eternity, isn't it? Really short. So when those struggles come, remember that eternity is coming. Life is short right now, but don't let that short life have complete control of you. Don't let life right now, don't let what's going on around us right now, don't let that have control of you. Let Jesus have control of you. Let the love of God have control of you because he wants to give us that for eternity. And so we battle this little issue now. <sighs> Relax and just go in his presence. Let's pray together. Holy God, I just love you so much. Father, I ask you to bless these people here today who have so shown me your love. They have treated me so kind even when I'm failing in issues. They have not condemned me for that. Thank you, Father. Bless them. Give them rich blessing for how they have acted. Father, you are our answer. You are our answer for eternity. And we just take joy in that. Thank you. Thank you so very much for who you are and what you have done for us completely. In the precious, holy, righteous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let me give you our benediction. It's out of Second Peter, chapter 1. Verse 2, look at these words and think about them. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God. So what does that mean? May God give you more grace and peace as you look at his word, as you study his word. That's what this talk about. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and your knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord. That is what I have experienced in this brain tumor and this brain cancer. That's what I've experienced. It's God's grace and peace. I have sought Him more in the last year, it's been almost a year. You thought about it. you haven't thought about it. that. Doesn't matter to you. It's been eleven months, more than eleven months now, that I've been going through this, and I have spent more time in these eleven months in God's Word, seeking Him honestly, than I ever have in a year in all the rest of my life. Wow! May God give you more and more grace and peace, Rod, as you grow in your knowledge of God and your knowledge of Jesus Christ. God's rich blessing on each of you as you seek him daily. But do seek him daily because he does love you. You can seek him too, little buddy. God's blessing on you. Thank you for coming. Those of you who have been here, thank you for coming.